In New York City, this team of elite designers, engineers, and construction workers Watch the boom. are on a mission to build the ultimate airport. We didn't realize the magnitude of what we were going to be up against. The city's new LaGuardia Airport will cost more than $8 billion and be America's first new airport in more than 25 years. The United States has fallen way behind in terms of infrastructure. A new LaGuardia is something that we always knew we needed. Over the course of nine years, 7,000 workers must completely rebuild the old airport here to create a brand new, fully connected facility that can handle more than 34 million passengers every year. This is such a massive program. This series charts the exclusive inside story of the extraordinary race to build the ultimate airport. Welcome to LaGuardia Airport. New York, the city that never sleeps. More than 120 million people fly in and out of the Big Apple each year. Airline travel is in high demand, uh, particularly in New York. In a city where time is money, commuters expect fast, efficient transport. We're in New York. We have to have the best of the best. We should be leaders. So today, this team of architects and engineers is designing America's first new airport in a quarter of a century. Well, this is once in a generation, once in a lifetime, once in a career type of experience that we're about to embark on. New York's LaGuardia Airport, which sits to the east of Manhattan, now handles around 550,000 passengers each week. But in the future, it's expected to need capacity for more. The plan is to demolish the separate terminals and rebuild them connected 600 feet back towards the edge of the site. Twin pedestrian bridges will lead passengers to their gates, a world first. 40 acres of extra room airside will enable new dual taxiways that let planes circulate freely. It'll take 72,000 tons of steel and almost 600,000 tons of concrete, but LaGuardia's new terminals will finally be fully unified. An airport fit for 21st century travel. It will be so far from what LaGuardia used to be uh, that it will take your breath away. Building the new airport calls for an unparalleled range of expertise, from crane operators and iron workers to engineers and geologists. Time is money and we need to get done as soon as possible. This transformation can't come too soon for commuters here. This is my first trip to Liguria and probably my last. I don't want to come back. The old airport, run down and over capacity, is a national embarrassment. The new airport may be desperately needed, but building this giant will not be easy. Everybody has to be on their A game, and not their A game sometimes, their A game all the time. Port Authority Executive Director Rick Cotton is in charge of delivering this epic project. These construction projects are so complicated. The reality is they're almost beyond the capacity of even the most skilled, the largest construction company. So Rick has two separate teams designing and building the airport. One for the new Terminal B and one for the new Terminal C. While the historic Art Deco Marine Air Terminal A, built in the 1930s, will be preserved to safeguard its unique architectural features. The two terminal teams face a monumental challenge, the site. LaGuardia is hemmed in by water on one side and roads on the other. There's no way to make the site larger. And to make their task even more difficult, Rick must keep the airport fully operational throughout construction. 
flights cannot be shut down. All of LaGuardia would fit into Central Park with 150 acres to spare. The construction project at LaGuardia is a ballet on a postage stamp. There's simply no room. The lack of space and complex logistics forced the team to design a new layout for the airport. So if we look at the original design of LaGuardia Airport, it is really a great study in how these airports evolved. Peter Ruggiero is part of the team designing LaGuardia's new Terminal B. It's always very helpful to learn from the past. Airports have shape-shifted as the aviation industry has changed. If we think back to 50, 60, 70 years ago, airports were a linear design, and the planes were lined up in a linear fashion. As commercial air travel grew and expanded, the idea was don't keep making it longer and linear, but simply start to fold it to create fingers. The original plan for LaGuardia was a classic example of the finger design. During the 1960s, as more people flew, aircraft grew in size to hold more passengers. But bigger aircraft means fewer can park around the finger-shaped concourses. The inefficiency of the finger is found in these inside corners. Large aircraft can't easily maneuver in and out of these tight corners. So LaGuardia's new Terminal B will have a radically different shape. It will use a satellite design. On a freestanding satellite concourse, you can even park on the corners. The airlines and the airport operators found great efficiencies in this design. The new design transforms the four fingers of the old Terminal B into two freestanding satellite concourses. Aircraft can park all around the perimeter with many different routes leading to the runway, reducing time on the tarmac. Getting passengers from the new main terminal building to the concourses is more complex. They could dig tunnels under the taxiways, but this would take years and add millions of dollars to the project. The design team's elegant solution, two vast pedestrian bridges so high above the tarmac that all aircraft can pass beneath. There are only three airports in the world, Gatwick, Denver, and Seattle, that use a pedestrian bridge to get passengers to a concourse. So this would be the first airport in the world to actually use parallel bridges. That becomes an incredible amenity for the airport, with views out to the Manhattan skyline. What a great way to say welcome to New York.